All right, so let's continue our discussion of formal charges uh, and see how they relate to resonance structures. So we're going to sort of circle back to a question. When we have non-identical resonance structures, uh, before now we weren't able to say which one was better. Well, formal charges are going to give us a way to rank um, the importance of different resonance structures when they're non-identical. Okay, let's start by drawing the resonance structures that we can for the cyanate ion. Uh, in the last video we had cyanide, Cn minus, uh, cyanate is NCO minus. Um, so carbon being least electronegative will be our central atom, CON. I'll go ahead and put in the single bonds because we know we're going to need them. Um, for the valence electrons, uh, carbon will give me 4, oxygen 6 gives us 10, nitrogen 5 gives us 15, plus a negative charge gives us 16 valence electrons. And so I've used four for the single bonds. I'll start giving them to the most electronegative non-central atom. So that would be oxygen. So two, four, here's six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So I've given out all 16 valence electrons. Uh, nitrogen and oxygen are happy with their octets. Of course, carbon uh, is without an octet. And so we have, uh, I think, three ways that we can uh, or three different resonance structures that we can draw. I need to convert lone pairs into bonding pairs, and so I can either take two lone pairs from nitrogen, giving us a triple bond between nitrogen and carbon. Uh, that'll give carbon a full octet, or I could do the same thing with oxygen, give a triple bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Or I could take one lone pair from both the nitrogen and the oxygen to give me double bonds between the carbon and nitrogen and carbon and oxygen. So those three resonance structures that we can draw for cyanate are thus oops, not oxygen there, that should be nitrogen. Okay, so we have three resonance structures. Sloppy arrows, uh, sorry about that. Um, and they're non-equivalent, and so we want to see if we can use formal charges to determine which one is the best. So what I want to do is for each atom in each of the resonance structures, I want to assign a formal charge. So if I just go from left to right, that first nitrogen, Nitrogen normally has five valence electrons. In this case, two balls, three sticks for five. So five minus five, we get a zero. Right, carbon normally has four valence electrons. It has no balls, four sticks. So that carbon is also going to be zero. And then an oxygen normally has six valence electrons. In this case, six balls, one stick is seven. So six minus seven, I get the minus one on the oxygen there. All right, if I go to the middle one, uh, now nitrogen has uh, five valence electrons, four balls, two sticks, so five minus six, the negative one is on the nitrogen. Carbon, still four sticks, so its formal charge is zero. Oxygen, six valence electrons, minus four balls and two sticks, gives us a zero on the oxygen there. And then in the last Lewis structure, um, now the nitrogen has five valence electrons, minus six balls and a stick, so five minus seven, we get a negative two on the nitrogen. Carbon, still no balls, four sticks, so it still has a formal charge of zero. In this case, the oxygen, six minus two balls and three sticks, six minus five, we get a plus one on the oxygen in that. And so the rules I have listed here are in order of their importance. So we can determine the best resonance structure by following those rules. And once a rule differentiates two or more resonance structures from each other, we can stop. We don't have to look at the other rules. Um, if, if, they're you know, if we can decide them by the earlier rules, then I don't need to use the later ones. So we sort of consider these rules in order. 
So if I want to know the best resonance structure, the first thing I look at is the magnitude of the formal charges. And so I want, you know, the amount of non-zero formal charges to be as small as possible. And formal charges, you know, larger than plus or minus one are particularly bad. So when I look at those three resonance structures, we see that the one on the right, based on rule one, is clearly the worst, right? The other two have a magnitude of formal charges adding up to one, uh, whereas the magnitude of formal charges on the one on the right is three. Um, and so this is the worst, based on rule one. Right, but it doesn't allow me to distinguish between the first one and the middle one because they both have the same magnitude of formal charges. So if that's the case, then I go to the next rule. And so having like charges on adjacent atoms is not desirable. That does not allow me to differentiate between those two resonance structures. They both only have one non-zero formal charge, so rule two doesn't really apply. So then I go to the third rule. And so uh, negative formal charges should reside on more electronegative atoms. That makes sense. Electronegative atoms want electrons, so if anybody's going to have a negative charge, we want it to be the more electronegative atom. And I didn't put it on number three just to make it less cumbersome, but the opposite is also true. Less electronegative atoms would want a positive charge if we had a positive formal charge. So when I compare the first and the middle resonance structures based on rule three, in the one on the left, oxygen has the negative charge. On the one in the middle, nitrogen has a negative charge. So oxygen being more electronegative than, I'm sorry, oxygen being more electronegative than nitrogen means that this is the best resonance structure for the cyanate ion, right? And the one on the far right is sort of the worst. And then the, the middle one is, you know, uh, kind of the middle in terms of importance. Um, and so actually what this means in terms of the resonance hybrid is that all three of these resonance structures still contribute to the resonance hybrid, but the better resonance structures are going to contribute more to the resonance hybrid. So the actual cyanide ion is going to look like a combination of all three of these resonance structures that we can draw, but it's going to look more like this one and less like this one certainly, uh, and then a little bit of this one uh, mixed in. So the better the resonance structure, the more it contributes to the resonance hybrid. All right, so I want to update our guidelines for writing Lewis structures a little bit. So we'll leave the first five alone. These, these are not changed from the ones that we've seen uh, in previous videos. But I want to add two things that we should consider based on what we've learned since we first started doing Lewis structures for covalent compounds. Even if you've made sure that all the atoms have a complete octet, you want to check and make sure that there weren't other ways to fulfill giving everyone an octet. And so we want to check for alternate resonance structures. And this doesn't probably mean anything to you yet, but I don't want to keep updating the, the rules. As we'll see um, in an upcoming video, um, this will be more relevant. If the principal quantum number for the, the valence electrons is greater than three, then we have to consider expanded octets. That doesn't mean anything to us now, but it will here in a little bit. Um, and then this last one is relevant to this video. So if multiple valid resonance structures are found, then we want to determine the best one by looking at the formal charges and using the three rules that we learned on the last slide. Okay, um, I have more examples in a subsequent video uh, of using formal charges to rank resonance structures, uh, but I'll just do one example here. Um, now, this question uh, isn't strictly about resonance structures because these two molecules are not resonance structures of one another. The only thing that can be different in resonance structures is how the electrons are arranged, but the way the atoms are connected can't be different in two resonance structures. So these two are not resonance structures of one another, they're just different molecules. Uh, we would call them constitutional isomers because we have the same number and types of atoms, but the way the atoms are connected are different. Um, so it's not just the electrons are different, but how the atoms are actually connected are different. But we can still use formal charges to say which one of these molecules is more stable. It's going to be one that has the more favorable formal charges. And so if I want to know uh, which one of these is a better Lewis structure for a compound that has the formula SCH4, 
I want to assign all the formal charges. So the hydrogens are kind of easy, right? All of these hydrogens have one stick, no balls, uh, all hydrogen only has one valence electron, so one minus one, the formal charge on all the hydrogens is zero. And so I'm not going to bother uh, writing that in just to, to keep it from getting messy. But we do want to consider the sulfur and the carbon. And so in the left-hand Lewis structure, we'll do sulfur in red. The formal charge on that sulfur, sulfur is in the same column as oxygen, so it normally has six valence electrons. In this Lewis structure, it has uh, no balls and four sticks. So six minus four, that sulfur is positive two for its formal charge. And the carbon, we'll do that in blue. The formal charge, carbon normally has four valence electrons. In this case, four balls and two sticks. So the formal charge on that carbon is negative two. Uh, so it's a neutral molecule and the formal charges add up to be zero. But I think right off, you may notice this is probably not a great structure because uh, I have a magnitude of four for the formal charges. Uh, let's see what happens if we look at the formal charge on the one on the right here. So again, all the hydrogens are zero, so I'm not going to bother calculating those. But if we look at the carbon, I'll keep it blue. All right, the formal charge is now going to be four valence electrons minus no balls and four sticks, so four minus four, the formal charge is zero. And so we'll look at sulfur again. The formal charge, sulfur has six valence electrons, uh, four balls and two sticks, so six minus six is zero. So Clearly, the, the Lewis structure on the right is the more stable Lewis structure for a compound that has the formula SCH4. And so we can use it to evaluate resonance structures. Uh, we can also use it to um, look at the stability of different possible uh, connections of the atoms.